Our universities have what many ambitious nations want, the knowledge of math, physics, science, chemistry, and technology to develop sophisticated armaments and weapons of mass destruction. China has never forgotten Chairman Mao's famous observation that political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. University scholars don't like to think about that, so they don't. Many have developed a willful naivete about the global arms race, and that is making the world a much more dangerous place. The People's Republic of China, the PRC, has moved quickly from a military with lots of troops but crude armaments to a leaner force with state-of-the-art weaponry. They've done it largely with the help of American academia, which sees tuition dollars in China's vast population. The Chinese have said to American universities, sure, come over and enroll our students and take the money, but you must teach us about advanced technology. U.S. university administrators caught the next flight to Beijing. Tom Malik is a section chief in the FBI's headquarters counterintelligence division. Malik says the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, is relentless in trying to acquire our know-how. Years, years of focused, targeted, uh, and deliberate collection efforts by the PLA, uh, by the Chinese government, if you will, against our technological base has benefited their country. There are technologies that we have deployed to the battle space today and, 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 and as, as it relates to analysis, comparative analysis, that we have increasingly lost our lead and superiority as a result of China's deliberate acquisition of our key technologies. I don't see this as a big issue. In, in my mind, uh, most of the work is, uh, is, is not sensitive at all, and there's a, maybe a tiny, tiny part that would fall in this category. Forget the spies you've seen in the movies. The Chinese are more subtle than that. They would do it in the form of, uh, of, of collaboration, uh, trading uh, journals and, and, and publications, uh, sharing and, and, uh, their research findings and what have you, and to the extent that that can be escaped from our laboratories here and then used or exploited or leveraged in their home country, this is where we're starting to see the, uh, the de deterioration of our technological base. A favorite method of Chinese technology espionage is to host or attend a scientific symposium. Many professors and scientists fancy themselves as rock stars of knowledge. They love the limelight, the compliments of their peers from other countries. The Chinese understand many U.S. academics can be bought for a plane ticket and prepaid reservations at a luxury resort. A few drinks in the hotel bar may be all it takes to get the information they want. This is where they really excel. I mean, you, you give your lecture and, and you think that you're not uh, saying anything sensitive. But then they take you out to dinner, liquor you up, and then you do say things that are sensitive. And then it becomes embarrassing to have to admit that, and you don't admit it. Sometimes they come here as students or visiting scholars because the information they want can't be acquired over drinks with a showboating professor. Greg Stashkel, a retired FBI agent who was assigned for years to the Bureau's Ann Arbor, Michigan office, says the University of Michigan, a big recipient of federal research grants, is one of the targets of Chinese academic espionage. Counterintelligence was one of Stashkel's responsibilities. Is the Chinese military interested in acquiring knowledge that's on this campus? Certainly. Uh, not just this campus, but certainly there are, there is technology, there is research ongoing that has military applications that the Chinese and, and frankly other powers, but certainly the Chinese have the ability with a large number of, of students here uh, that they would have an interest in acquiring that technology. And, uh, uh, and again, it's primarily funded by, uh, by the taxpayer. Are they aggressive about trying to acquire our advanced R&D? I, I, would, I would characterize them as being, being aggressive, yes. I mean, you've got, uh, uh, like I say, a relatively large community, and that uh, uh, there are those among those, or they are being instructed or co-opted uh, to the extent that they understand that uh, this is an important aspect of their being here at the university, is to obtain the technology. Bill Kaufman, a professor of aerospace engineering at Michigan, says it's obvious that some of the Chinese students on North Campus are here on assignment. The people that are sent here as students are highly qualified specialists, and they are looking to acquire niche technology. I mean, you don't have people coming over here to study 
airplanes like at Oshkosh. People were coming over here to study high-speed re-entry vehicles and high-thrust jet engines. So, so they're searching for things that are going to have a direct effect on the improvement of their technology and their weapons systems. The FBI, which is charged with investigating espionage against the United States, is trying to work with our major universities to control who has access to our advanced technology, which is often developed in campus labs. What we do hear from Academic America is they want their people to travel to China and other parts of the world, and we don't impede that and we don't discourage that. And conversely, they like to have scientists, students, and others come, scholars come, and visit their universities here in the United States. We don't discourage that. But we, what we do ask is diligence. In periodic meetings with university leaders, the FBI is trying to find a balance between academic freedom and the need to defend the United States from those who would steal our weapons technology and use it against us. Among the cooperating research universities are Penn State, MIT, Cornell, Carnegie Mellon, UCLA, New York, Purdue, Rice, Michigan State, and others. Mary Sue Coleman, the University of Michigan president, and her minions have refused to meet in person with FBI agents, insisting instead on written questions and answers. In fact, Michigan and some other universities have lobbied aggressively and successfully against tightening the Commerce Department rules on taxpayer-funded research, which can be shared with Communist China and other potential adversaries. I don't really see that as a big issue. Uh, in, in fact, uh, if, if anything, we're going too far in the direction of keeping things confidential. We're, we're sometimes being asked to keep things confidential that are actually freely available. The United States is long overdue to have a thorough review of what is freely available in terms of our technology innovations, commercial and military. After all, it was paid for with our money. Experts say academia isn't entirely to blame for this situation. They say the U.S. government should decide what needs to be protected and what doesn't, and spell that out clearly for our university researchers. It is incumbent upon us, I think, as a nation and having a national security policy to be able to, one, identify specifically, not just, you can't just say sensors, you can't just say composite material, what specific research are we trying to protect and to be able to tell our intelligence minds, the academics, the people that work on it, this is where we draw the line. And then to provide guidance to them in the form of specific briefings that will alert them to how that information might be elicited from them. The Commerce Department or the FBI ought to be posting a notice. You know, these, guy, these guys from, from Harbin are coming. This is, this is where we think they're going. This is what they do for the PLA. And uh, please, when you meet with them, which you are totally free to do because we're a free society, uh, comport yourself in a way that, that doesn't someday help to kill Americans. I'm Vince Wade. This is our country.